Good morning. Welcome to morning worship on behalf of St. Luke's Episcopal Church in Billings, Montana. I'm Melinda St. Clair. I'm the rector there and I'm live streaming to you from my home this morning and uh, hopefully it won't be all that much longer. We'll see. Today uh, we are using the proper uh, prayers and readings for the third Sunday in Lent. So if you have a leaflet, we will we will use that. And we're going to use <clears throat> the service of the word penitential order. So please uh, find in your prayer book page 351. We will begin on page 351. And then we will go back a page to do the Decalogue, which is a contemporary version of saying uh, and praying the Lord, uh, the Ten Commandments. And then we will go forward in the book, and I will announce the page numbers. So we begin on page 351. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. God's mercy endures forever. On page 350, hear the commandments of God to God's people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Lord, have mercy. On page 351, Jesus said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Turning the page. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. 
And now turn to page 356. Page 356. This morning we will use the Latin. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> our first reading on this third Sunday in Lent comes from Exodus, chapter 20, starting at the first verse. A reading from Exodus. God spoke all these words to Moses on Mount Sinai. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and those who keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses God's name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Today we will be saying Psalm 19, which is in your leaflet. It can also be found on page 606 in your Book of Common Prayer. Page 606. Psalm 19. Please say it with me. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, 
Their sound has gone out into all lands and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep he has set a pavilion for the sun. It comes from forth, it comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hid from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of great offense. <clears throat> Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. The statutes of the Lord rejoice the heart. Our second reading today is from the first letter that Paul wrote to the Christians in Corinth. Chapter 1, beginning at verse 18, a reading from 1 Corinthians. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in, wis in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those of us who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, for, Christ's, for God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In this Lenten time, we would ordinarily sing, in all times, a hymn now. So I just take a breath for a moment, it's Lent, and reflect on the day for just a moment and become ready to hear the gospel. <clears throat> the gospel is a reading from that according to John, chapter 2, beginning with verse 13. A reading from the Gospel of John. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. 
He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, The temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> As in the psalm, I will say, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts always be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> I reflect a lot lately, and by lately I mean the last several years. <laughs> uh, lately, in, a, in the larger sense, I guess, um, on the foolishness of human wisdom. And I've come to know that that's true. That God's wisdom is always more true, more right, more powerful, and more yet to come than anything we people can think of through using the ways of the world. As Paul tells us, you know, God makes the, the wise foolish and the foolish wise. And so I think that means that we Christians, we people who are in relationship with God through Christ, in Christ, uh, through the, the life and, and including, you know, from the moment the incarnate God was uh, conceived in the womb, and went through all of life and was crucified and died and rose and was ascended. All of that is what, what Christ has done for us. And we Christians are meant to, to see or try to see, to mine the depths of what that means for us as we say we, uh, Christ is that in which we live and move and have our being. And so being a Christian means ever trying to understand what that means for us, for the way we perceive the world around us, for the way we respond to the world around us. And Paul tells us that in the ways of the world it may seem foolish. Because the ways of the world tell us that we're supposed to uh, seek worldly treasure. That the measure of our success often has to do with how much wealth or stuff or prestige or power that we have in this world. And let's face it, it's the people with the money that have the power. But it's the poor that perhaps have the true power because that's that's who Christ favors Jesus gravitates to those who by worldly standards are just the wrong people 
and confronts those with all the wealth and the power and the status who are forgotten the understanding of servant leadership, of servanthood. And, you know, during this Lent, we understand uh, in the Gospel of John that we hear today, a little bit later, Jesus washes the feet of his disciples. He doesn't say, go and take over the temple and uh, get, get into power and sit up there. You can make things happen the way I would like. That might be the ways of the world. That certainly seems to play out. It's not the ways of Christ. You know, think about all the conflicts in the world. What are they over? Power, resources, ideology. Christ teaches us that none of that matters. What matters is that we love each other and we care for one another no matter the cost. And that seems like foolishness. But in God's economy, it's wise. Jesus throws a fit in the temple to get stuff, this commerce, out of the temple. And you know, the thing is, this stuff was necessary. People came from far and wide to, on Passover by the hundreds of thousands, some say maybe even more than a million, to come and they had to make sacrifice at the temple. Uh, and some were rich, some were poor, but you know, they're not gonna bring a goat or a lamb, or not a, you know, with them for maybe hundreds of miles maybe more, they're going to come and want to purchase one at the temple. Well, they couldn't use coinage to pay the temple tax to make their tithe. They couldn't use, um, they had to use temple coinage. And they couldn't use Greek or Roman or any other kind. So the money changers were a valuable service. People would come I mean, you know, you go, you go to a foreign country, what do you, you know, you go to Israel, you get shekels. I mean, that's what they were there for. <clears throat> the problem is, all of this commerce was moved into the temple. And it became so intertwined that both became corrupt. And Jesus is saying, get this commercial stuff out of here. It doesn't belong in the temple. This is not a house of trade. This is a place where God is. And then he says, from now on, God resides in me, Jesus says. He's speaking of the temple of his body. They didn't remember until after he'd raised, been raised from the dead. So he's saying, the place we worship God is not in a particular in the temple, in the Holy of Holies, in that little box called the tabernacle. Though God's presence isn't there, but from now on, it's in Christ. It's in, you know, Jesus says, it's in me. Well, that seemed like foolishness to them. And the only thing that allows us to believe in the teachings of and the life and all and death, resurrection, ascension, all of the teachings of Jesus, all that we know about God through Christ and in Christ is, is foolish in the ways of the world. And the only reason we can believe it is because God gives us that gift through the power of the Holy Spirit. God wants us to believe the truth. And the truth is, the ways of the world have gone so askew from the ways of God. We have to look back 
we have to look back to what Jesus was doing on this day. And don't take something that is necessary and good, twist it around, and make it part of the church. That's what sin is. Get the sin out of the temple. Get the sin out of the church. And we, you and me, we're the church. So let's be fools for Christ. Amen. On page 358, please join me in proclaiming the faith of the church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again in, pa in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, and has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people this morning are Form 1. Uh, you can find them on page 383 in your prayer book, but you really won't need your prayer book for the prayers today. Uh, after each petition, I will say, let us pray to the Lord, and you will respond with, Lord, have mercy. Toward the end, it's a little bit different, but that's okay. So, with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Marty, our bishop, Melinda, our rector, Stephen, Jerry, Gary, and Joan, our Billings priests, and all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For these cities of Billings, Joliet, Laurel, Levina, and for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather, and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, in the air, and through outer space, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those on our prayer list, including Scott, Mike, Yvonne, Alice, Harry, Kay, Jerry, Alan, Rose, Sandra, those for whom our prayer chain intercedes, and any others you care to name. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the men and women of the United States military, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Watch over all those in dangerous professions working for the benefit of our society. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all doctors and nurses, technicians, and all others working in our Billings health care systems, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For people throughout the world suffering in the grip of the COVID-19 pandemic, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the pets dumped at shelters or thoughtlessly neglected or abandoned, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those who have died in the hope of the resurrection, especially Mandy Wright, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in the, thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we give thanks and pray for the Anglican province of the Congo. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we give thanks and pray for St. Stephen's in Stevensville, Richard Tardiff, interim priest in charge. In the parish cycle of prayer, we give thanks and pray for the Bishop Fox Company Board, for Bill and Nancy Davies, for Lawrence DeBoer and Lisa Malady, for Corrine and John Deneg, for Carrie Donahoe. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord our God. And now let us pray in the words that our Lord Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. That concludes our service of the word this Sunday morning. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we are having our first Sunday fellowship uh, on Zoom uh, at noon, right? Uh, Libby, give me a thumbs up if it's at noon. <laughs> yeah, it's at noon. Uh, we're having our first Sunday fellowship, so you should have gotten uh, an invitation to that. So join us for that, I hope. Uh, we have more Lent to go, but uh, we're looking forward to my hope and my plan is for us to be able to worship in person on Easter morning. Um, the weather's nice. We'll do it outside, uh, um, we, or at least we'll be inside so that we can uh, do our... Um, uh, we'll open the doors and windows so we can have good ventilation. Uh, but uh, unless if things keep going the way they are, we will be able to have in-person worship on Easter, maybe even Palm Sunday. I'll have to get the information out to you. There will be another mailing coming uh, to, uh, to the people on our mailing list. Uh, so anyway, um, pray for that. I have had both of my COVID-19 vaccine shots now. And they said, you know, then wait to a couple of weeks and you'll, it'll be full power, uh, in my body. So at that point I'll be able to, uh, do some more visiting. And, uh, uh, that was the first step that had to happen. Uh, and father Jerry, it has had both of his shots too. So now all of the Billings clergy, we've all had our shots. <laughs> We're, a, a, a good little pack. Uh, we've all had our shots. So anyway, um, Yay for that. I hope those of you who are able to get your shots will do so uh, as soon as possible. That's another thing that happens, has to happen in our steps to reopening fully. Uh, but I'm looking forward to that. And so I'll see all of you guys at noon, or some of you guys, uh, if you're members of St. Luke's. Uh, otherwise, uh, see if you're just tuning in for Facebook, see you right here.